All right, mates, how's it going? In today's video, episode 17 of Day of the Dragon by Richard A. Nack. Let's go! At some point, whilst being dragged off to a cell or something, Ronin had again fallen unconscious. But as said consciousness returned to him, and he slowly opened his eyes, he immediately saw something absolutely terrifying. A fiery skull, smiling malevolently at him. But after the initial shock and horror, Ronin calmed down a bit and studied the strange being. Some kind of demonic sentinel, surrounded by flame but giving off no heat whatsoever. What are you? However, the macabre figure remained motionless and said nothing back. Can you hear me? Still no reply. Bloody rude, this thing was. Ronin then leaned closer, or as close as his chains would allow him. He was more curious than scared now. Was this a living thing or just a statue? And upon further inspection, the wizard realised that although it appeared demonic in form, it was no demon. A golem, perhaps? He'd studied golems a little bit, but he'd never seen one. And he couldn't, for the life of him, recall what they were capable of. Eh, there's only one way to find out. So, ignoring the pain, Ronin started to move his remaining fingers to conjure a spell. However, the golem then burst into motion with astonishing swiftness, seized Ronin's maimed hand, and squeezed. All the wizard could do was scream. Felt like he was burning from the inside out. It was so bad that Ronin genuinely started to pray for death. But the flames surrounding the golem then started to dwindle. The creature released him and went back to being completely still and indifferent. Damn you. <laughs> naughty, naughty. Play with fire, you get burnt. Ronin tipped his head to the side to see the little goblin wanker from before. And again, that goblin carried the Dark One's medallion. So you serve Deathwing. A frown momentarily appeared on the goblin's face. His bidding I've done for a very long time. So why are you here now? I've served your master's purpose, haven't I? Played his fool well. No greater fool could there have been. But you didn't just play a fool for the Dark Lord, friend. Played one for me too. And how did I do that? In what way could I have possibly served you, goblin? Dark Lord thinks Goblin so low as to serve any master without reason of his own. I've served enough, I have. Goblin's had a reputation for being insane, but... You plan to betray even the drag? How? Poor, poor Master Necros. He's in a state. Dragons to move. Eggs to move. Orcs to move. Little time to think if that's actually what others want him to do. Might have fought more. But now that the Alliance invades from the West, can't be bothered. Has to act. Has to be an orc, you know. They're not making any sense. What a fool. The goblin then laughed maniacally and held up the medallion. You brought me this. Krill then started to fondle the medallion, peeling away at the stone in the center. And within a few moments, a black gem popped out. And with this, no more Deathwing. You hope to use that stone to bring him down. Or make him serve me. No more toadium for the reptile. No more being his lackey. I plan long and hard for this. Waiting and waiting and watching. For when he'll be most vulnerable. This plan still seemed mental. But that didn't stop Ronin from being absolutely fascinated by it. Necros will provide the weight. Not that he knows. And this stone is part of the Dark Lord, human. A scale. Turned to stone by his own magic. Do you know what it means to hold a part of a dragon? Ronin thought back to his own studies. What was it he'd once heard? To bear some bit of the greatest of the Leviathans is to have a hold on their power. But that's never been done. You need tremendous magic yourself to make it work. And you're just a... Suddenly, the golem remembered it was still there or something and started to stir. Possibly due to Ronin's growing irritation. And Ronin went extremely still and silent himself hoping desperately that there wouldn't be a repeat of the whole burning from the inside out thing again. Well, it looks like you're busy, human. Sorry to overstay. Just wanted to tell someone of my glory. And you'll be dead soon enough. So I'll be off. Necros needs my guidance, after all. The goblin then buggered off, leaving Ronin alone with the golem. <laughs> Meanwhile... The moment night had fallen, the hill dwarves had begun to methodically remove their rocks that blocked the secret entrance. Varisa had done exactly as she'd been told, and kept her conversation with Krasis to herself, but all she could do now was wait, and try not to get too stressed out about how much time was being wasted. But soon enough, 
The last of the stones were removed, and Grace's voice, sounding oddly haggard this time, echoed in her head once more. The way out. Is it open? For he's a windrunner. Just finished. Then you may proceed. Once you're in, remove the talisman from wherever it is you've hidden it. That will allow me to observe what lies ahead. I will not speak again until you and the airy dwarf have made it through the tunnels. Verisa then turned to see Faustad standing right next to her. Are you ready, my elven lady? Seems to me this sorry bunch won't rid of us quick. Definitely seemed that way. Rom was literally standing by the opening impatiently gesturing for them to get on with it. So, Verisa and Faustad squeezed their way through. And the moment they did, the dwarves started restacking the stones behind them. For the second time in recent memory, Verisa felt like she was being buried alive. So what do we do now? Verisa took some breaths and then pulled the medallion out. What's that? Help. I hope. That's good, thanks. I can see quite well. What's up with you? And it was in that moment that Verisa decided, yes, Krasis had told her not to tell anyone, but this was ridiculous. Thastad, you know the Kirin Tor sent Ronin on a mission? Eh? Not the foolish one he mentioned either. So? This medallion is from the wizard who chose him. The one who sent him on his true quest. To enter the mountain. For what reason? That's not been made completely clear to me so far. But this medallion enables that wizard, Graces, to speak with me. I can't hear anything. That's how it works, unfortunately. Ah, typical wizardry. You'd best move on. Time is, as they say, of the essence. Again, Graces' voice caused Verisa to flinch somewhat. Is he speaking to you now? He wants us to move on. Says he can guide us. He can see? Through the crystal. Yes. Faustad then thrust an angry finger at the medallion itself. I swear by the airy. Play us false and thy ghost will hunt you down, spellcaster. Tell the dwarf our goals are similar. Verisa relayed that message to Faustad, who grudgingly accepted it. Even the ranger had her reservations. There's a difference between goals being similar and goals being one and the same. But after all of that, Crisis began providing directions. Directions that seemed peculiar at first, but soon enough. An old dwarven mine. The orcs think it leads nowhere. Why have Rom and his people not used it if it leads inside? Because they've been patiently waiting. Waiting for what? Quiet. Something's coming. Both the elf and the dwarf quickly hid. And it was lucky they did because a fearsome shape then came into view. A dragon. Stay silent. The dragon's ears are very sharp. Another figure then came into view. An orc. The beast's handler. That orc then yelled something, causing the dragon to hiss and start to move on. But, just as it seemed like both the orc and dragon were about to leave, the medallion round Verisa's neck flared so bright it lit up the entire cavern. Verisa tried to cover it, but twas no use. Both the dragon and the orc reacted, and were now approaching rapidly. Remove the medallion from round your neck. Be prepared to throw it in the direction of the dragon. Verisa started to do as she was told, and Krasis then provided even more strange instructions. Tell the dwarf to step out. Reveal himself. Um, Faustad, he wants you to step out. Does he want me to get inside the dragon's mouth, or just lay down in front of it and let the beast nibble on me at its leisure? We don't have time for this. Again, Verisa repeated the wizard's words, and Faustad sighed, cursed to himself, and stepped out. Dwarf, good. We're getting bored. You'll make good sport before you're fed to Zara's here. He's hungry. Tis he'll make good sport, fuckfeath. Both the orc and dragon accelerated their advance. Throw the talisman now. Be certain it lands near the dragon's mouth. The command from Krasis seemed pretty absurd, making Verisa wonder if she'd actually heard it correctly. Ranger, throw it now! So, with expert aim, Verisa threw the medallion towards the mouth of the dragon. However, the dragon itself went ahead and caught the damn thing with its mouth. Balls. Surely Krasis had not expected that. But then something weird happened. Something that caused the elf, dwarf, and orc to all pause in confusion. Instead of either swallowing or spitting out the medallion, the dragon stopped still, tilted its head, and then sat down. The orc handler attempted to shout a command, but the dragon just ignored him. Looks like your hounds found a toy to play with. Guess you'll have to fight your own battles for once. The dwarf and orc then ran at each other and started their little battle, which Verisa quickly joined. The orc was strong, with a reach that far exceeded his foes, even managed to catch Faustad's beard and singe it with a torch at one point. But it was two against one, so he died. Are you alright? Saddened at the loss of so many good years' beard growth, but I'll get over it. Faustad then turned his gaze back towards the dragon. 
The beast had now dropped down on all fours completely, and the elf and dwarf watched in amazement as the dragon spat the medallion out from its mouth and then looked at them expectantly. Does it want us to do what I think it wants us to do, my elven lady? I'm afraid so. Farisa approached the dragon and gingerly picked up the medallion. The way is clear now. Best you hurry before others come. What did you do to this monster? I spoke with him. He understands now. Understands what? Farisa thought, but she didn't say it. Instead, she turned to her companion and informed him that they were to move on, and then they did. A short while later, the pair had made their way through the abandoned mine and climbed a precarious passage, which brought them out onto a upper level of a massive cavern, and below them were a whole bunch of scurrying orcs. Looks as though they're all planning to leave. It worked. There was a tone to Krasis' voice that suggested those words were meant only for himself. Down there, look. Farisa followed Falstad's gaze. Tis Krill. I'm sure of it. Looks like he knows his way around here well. Krasis, can you show us how to get down to where that goblin's heading? However, nothing but silence. No echoey voice in her head whatsoever. What's he saying? Nothing. He's not responding. So we're on our own then. For now, it seems. That ledge over there should take us where we need to go. <sighs>